inflation and the lingering effect of the pandemic have left retailers across categories pondering how to prepare for the future. Retailers who had enjoyed success in the 1990s and early 2000s have been slow to move online. And economists are growing concern about the possibility of countries falling into recession in the next 12 months. And what about the retail sector? Will it also struggle under a possible recession or survive instead? And we'll have a discussion with the CEO of Matahari, one of the most popular fashion department store in Indonesia, Terry O'Connor. Hi, Terry. How are you? Great, Aubrey. Nice to be here. Yes. Thank you so much for being here on the Our Studio and See today. And it is interesting to actually see the CEO of a major Indonesian retailer is a foreigner. Uh, oh, could you tell us how actually you did end it up to this position? Well, I think a lot of executives in, in retail are international by nature. We have to travel across borders, travel across cultures mm. to really understand what are transferable best practices. Yeah. I personally uh, have been in Asia for uh, 30 or, or so years, mm -hmm. uh, based in Singapore, but with business interests in Indonesia, Thailand, um, Malaysia, and, and, and so on. And uh, when Matahari had a, uh, a vacancy for mm. a CEO, this was a uh, too good an opportunity to yeah. turn down, I call it a passion project, because there's such an emotional connectivity with the Indonesian consumer. Mm, nice. And also PT Matahari Department Store reported gross sales of 9.5 trillion rupiah for the period ended September 30, 2022. And this achievement increased by 26.5% compared to the same period in 2021. And also your SSSG or a same store sales growth was recorded at 144%. And meanwhile, your earning before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization year to date was recorded at one. 1.5 trillion rupiah, almost double the year to date September 2021 and above the full year 2021. What is actually your strategy for this achievement? Look, we, we focus on the basics. Um, it's about uh, really improving our merchandise ranges to full potential, curated around different parts of the uh, Indonesian consumer base. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're very popular with, uh, with young mums, with super mums yeah. across the family. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also about other elements of our blueprints as well. Loyalty and personalization through our, our reward scheme. It's around uh, omni-channel progress. Mm -hmm. uh, network optimization, we're, we've opened um, five new stores. We'll open another five new stores just in the next two months, so yeah. 10 this year, mm -hmm. 12 to 15 next year. So. In total, seven blueprints which are driving different parts of our business and uh, so far so good. We've got some green shoots. Okay, but talking about this store, uh, you recently launched House of Specialist Concept in Matahari. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, we, we believe that um, you know, we shouldn't buy into a narrative about a legacy department store. You know, that effectively, if you look at Matahari today, Matahari yeah. is a collection of specialized areas. Right? Mm -hmm. It is around uh, a product, price, experience, and people, mm -hmm. and really just taking all of our categories mm -hmm. and treating our categories robustly um, and acting as if we were a specialist, yeah. in, in that we only focused on that one area with right. that level of attention to detail and rigor, um, and, uh, and really therefore becoming a large format omni-channel, digitally savvy specialist. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, what are your thoughts about the retail business and also its potential in Indonesia, seeing that Matahari is popular among Indonesians with many stores across the country, right? Yeah, look, I think uh, you know, we're gonna, we'll see growth next year of, yeah. of, of around 5.1% GDP in the economy. We'll look to outstrip that in terms of uh, our own growth, not just through store expansion, but also through uh, you know underlying same store sales growth yeah. as well through all of those initiatives I mentioned. Um, you know, I'm reminded of the great Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, who basically mm -hmm. said, "Everybody tells me there's a recession on, yeah. but we choose not yes. to participate." Mm -hmm. So we're in it for the long haul. There's 72 million new consumers coming into the middle class between now and 2030. Mm -hmm. It's a really exciting market. Okay, but talking about the recession, and what are your thoughts about the projected recession in 2023? Look, I think, uh, I think Europe, US is going to go through a tough time. I think certain parts of North Asia may go through a tough time. But Indonesia is a 
burgeoning domestic market. It's, mm -hmm. got, uh, it's got its commodity strength. It's mm -hmm. got its sheer size and scale of consumer behavior. I think when we come into uh, the early part of next year, um, the gap between uh, wages and inflation will start to sort of partly correct. We're already starting to see gas prices fall, yeah. uh, cotton prices mm -hmm. fall. And so, you know, if you look at, uh, at next year, I think there's, you know, there's room for optimism and hope uh, and deliverability. Uh, mm -hmm. We just got to get through the, you know, the, the short-term inflationary pressures. Okay, but what are your actually your efforts to keep the retail business afloat as the recession nears? I've always found, um, you know, any difficult econo economic times to be an opportunity for people with the right spirit and the right and the right attitude. We've mm -hmm. got amazing talent. We've got amazing people. Uh, we have to keep our, our costs low, but at the same time, invest in technology and talent. We yeah. have to keep our margins stable, but at the same time, offer consumers great prices. And we have to make sure that we're visible in the market so that, you know, when everybody else is maybe taking a cautious stance, Matahari is mm -hmm. top of mind as the pride of Indonesia. Yeah, but talking about the pandemic uh, era, and you also have like the online store, right? The Matahari online. And uh, do you think like nowadays, like people actually shifting from the offline again to from the online? Because you know we are uh, um, shifting. Also, uh, we are now we going to the shopping mall, and we also going out. So. What's uh, actually in the Matahari online? We're, we're, we're kind of channel agnostic. You know, we've got uh, matahari.com, which has got 39,000 options for consumers. Yeah. We've got an official Matahari store mm -hmm. on uh, Tokopedia, on Shopee, on Lazada. We've got our own shop and talk social commerce mm -hmm. channel. And of, of course, every time malls have reopened during the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, consumers have rushed back to those malls for an experience, whereas when they're time starved, they might shop one of our other channels. And mm -hmm. so we believe that by basically making sure that we have a consistent customer experience across all, mm -hmm. um, that as consumers grow more comfortable with digital, um, yeah. Matahari will benefit too. But how's your projection uh, on the upcoming recession with the online store that you have? I think uh, if you look at uh, the digital players, the digital players themselves yeah. uh, are under a little bit of pressure because they've got high borrowing mm -hmm. and in a higher interest rate environment, that's a challenge and yeah. you can start to see that in rising commissions and so on. Whereas if you look at, uh, at our business, we've got such scale and relationships with developers. Mm -hmm. We've got good variable costs within our stores. And of mm -hmm. course, all of our operating costs are covered by our store base, mm -hmm. which means that the digital business is incremental to us. And, okay. and that's growing. It's growing 32% this year. So Whoa. we're happy with, with, yeah. with both channels. OK. And uh, maybe for the last question, could you share us some advice or some tips for retail entrepreneurs? Look, I, I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been an entrepreneur myself. Uh, my son is an entrepreneur. I, I think the, the key elements are really decide on what, what problem point are you yeah. trying to solve for. Um, select your customer base uh, with laser-like precision. Uh, make sure that you are focused on your product and that that product is uh, the best that you can be in terms of market leadership. And so pick your spot. I prefer specialists than generalists, as you've already heard. Mm -hmm. um, Keep your operating costs low and yeah. don't pay yourself too much in the early days. Okay. The rewards will come later. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Terry O'Connor, for being with us today in our C Today studio and sharing so many uh, insights and also tips and wish you success in your near future projects. Thank you so much once again.